I'm delighted to welcome the Reverend Kosho Nawano, who is the president-designate of the Risho Kusakai, a six million member lay Buddhist religious organization headquartered in Tokyo. Dear distinguished president, executive leaders, all friends, and ladies and gentlemen, it is a great honor for me to have been given this opportunity to address the General Assembly this year as the Unitarian Universalist Association marks the milestone of its 50th anniversary. President Peter Morales and members of the UUA Thank you all from the bottom of my heart. I am deeply moved to be speaking to you today because for us to spend this time together in the same place, in the here and now, is entirely thanks to God and the Buddha. Indeed, it is nothing less than a miracle at the same time, my presence here today is proof of the solid friendship that the UUA has extended to Rishoko Sekai over the long years, first to my grandfather, Nikkyo Niwano, the founder of Rishoko Sekai, and then to my father, Nichiko Niwano, the current president. Over the years, many productive exchanges and meaningful encounters between RKK members and the UUA congregation have built strong, lasting ties. All of you are aware, of course, of the massive earthquake and tsunami that struck the Tohoku region of Japan on March 11th. At that time, UUA members were quick to respond with an extremely generous donation of $120,000. Many of the RKK members affected by the disaster were deeply moved by this display of warm friendship coming from faraway America, friendship that transcends differences of country and faith. Your support has given them courage to start out on the long road of rebuilding their lives and communities. On behalf of Risho Kosekai, and as one Japanese citizen, I do not have enough words to express my gratitude. Thank you very much again. One urgent request coming from the devastated area is the call for vehicles to deliver essentials and to move people. At RKK, we decided that one part of the generous support we received from UUA members would take the form of providing several vehicles, which we are now under the final process. While I am taking this opportunity to tell you about the relief effort, I would also like to assure each and every one of you who opened your hearts and made a donation that all of your contributions are being best used in disaster relief efforts. The Buddha teaches us that all things are impermanent. In other words, all things in this world are constantly changing and do not stay the same for even a moment. I have always studied this teaching and tried to lead my life according to it. However, looking back from today's vantage point, 
I can see that prior to the earthquake, I was always thinking that when I wake up tomorrow, everything will continue just as it did the day before. On that day in Tohoku, a single moment became a great divide in which anything and everything changed. Familiar things that always had been in the same place suddenly vanished. Family members expected to be in the usual place at the usual, usual time would never be seen again. I am sure that you have seen images of the destruction on television and via the internet. I went to Tohoku to see the areas heavily damaged by the tsunami where the destruction approached total annihilation level. It was so horrific that it still defies imagination. Above this landscape of terrible destruction rose a beautiful sky, and beyond it lay an expanse of clear blue ocean, calm as if nothing had ever happened. When I saw it, I was so moved to tears by how small and powerless we human beings are before the mighty forces of nature. None of us can go back to the day before. Several fishermen closed my line of vision. As part of the effort to rebuild the destroyed fishing ports, they were clearing away debris and removing boats that landed on rooftops. They gave me a sense of the strength we human beings have in face of despair, tragedy, and uncertainty to help one another and to get back up on our feet. Founder Niwano was always teaching us the importance of bodhisattva practice, which can be summed up as forgetting about oneself and giving benefits to others. Bodhisattva practice is alive in the hearts and minds of every member of RKK. It is the spiritual and moral compass at the center of all our activities, from the smallest action of our daily lives to our work for interreligious cooperation and world peace. In this recent tragedy, many people consumed by their own suffering have become despondent and were likely to lose the will to live. Rishoko Seikai members, although victims themselves, have been able to show, show kindness and consideration for others and to dedicate themselves to helping those in need, thereby gaining the courage to move forward and begin rebuilding. <coughs> By forgetting about themselves and focusing on bodhisattva practice for the sake of other people, they are actually uncovering the meaning of their own lives and in turn helping themselves. I would like to tell you about a friend of mine from Kamaishi, Iwate Prefecture, one of the cities heavily damaged by the tsunami. She is the leader of the women's division of her local RKK Dalma Center. Her house and her family were all safe because they live in a mountainous area. However, many of her friends lost family members or 
had their homes washed out to sea. She told me, tears streaming down her face, if my friend's houses were like hell, then mine must be like heaven. I feel terribly sorry that my house was spared and theirs were not. Her minister asked her to let her do the cooking for the refugees at her Dalma center, which is serving as a shelter. From then on, every day, she volunteered to help the refugees and together with her friends, prepared meals for them. It was not easy for her, physically or spiritually, to plan menus for three meals a day, get the necessary ingredients, and do the cooking for such a large number of people one day after another. In addition, she had no idea how long her service would be required. She told me that before the earthquake, I don't think I could have done this volunteer work. Up until now, I would have found some excuse for being unable to help out. I would have thrown up my hands and said, let somebody else do it. In fact, even now, I sometimes struggle with myself. But now, I have been given the strength to overcome. For me, this is my life. And now, I am truly alive. When I look up, blue sky is spread out, spreading out before my eyes. Something I always took for granted now strikes me as beautiful and gives me a strength to move forward. There were tears in her eyes and she said, had it not been for the earthquake and tsunami, I might have never realized something so important as this. The last thing she said to me was that, these are tears of joy and gratitude. Thanks to the support we are receiving from kind people around the world. We are making progress here one step at a time. Her story echoes the powerful message delivered by former UUA president William Sinkford at the ceremony marking the 65th anniversary of our organization held at Rishoko Seikai headquarters in 2003. Take courage, friends. The way is often hard. The path is never clear. And the stakes are very high. Take courage, for deep down, there is another truth. You are not alone. All of you know, of course, that the strong spiritual ties between our two organizations began when the first UUA president, Dr. Dana Greeley, along with Dr. Homer Jack, first met founder Nikyo Niwano, an encounter that founder Niwano called decisive in determining the form of interreligious cooperation hereafter. I believe that above all else, the friendship between Dr. Greeley and founder Niwano, who called each other soulmates, is the unshakable band that even now joins our two organizations as one. Dr. Greeley and founder Niwano first met on January 22, 1968, just 
three days after I was born. <laughs> Two years later, after my second birthday, they were already convening the first World Assembly of the World Conference of Religions for Peace in Kyoto, Japan. Since my childhood, founder Niwano would often talk to me, his eyes sparkling like a little boy's, about his dream of and passion for the world peace, as well as the joy he found in pursuing the steep path toward it. Whenever he talked about world peace, he would mention that he and Dr. Greeley were walking that path together. On the occasions that Dr. Greeley visited Japan, I saw him and his wife several times, and I remember thinking that they made such a nice couple. <laughs> Frankly speaking, to me, Dr. Greeley was a very close friend of my grandfather's, a person very important to him because of the profound connection they shared. There are high hurdles to interreligious cooperation, so when it does happen, it seems to be something exceptional. Having been born at the time that these two great men first met, I was fortunate to have many opportunities to observe them and to grow up seeing firsthand their friendship and their passion for peace. As a result, I feel that today, for people of different faith, faith to reach, respect each other and to gladly join hands to work together for interreligious cooperation is not unusual, but in fact, something that happens naturally as a matter of course. Indeed, this legacy of mutual understanding is the greatest gift our two great predecessors made to our generation, which is following in their footsteps. The foundation for cooperation they built is so strong that Risho Kosekai had sent many of its graduate students to study at Midville Lombard Divinity School. This summer, thanks to the kindness and generosity of Dr. Lee Barker and Ms. Martha Atherton, two of our female staff members who are playing a role in interreligious cooperation will be sent to Midville Lombard to further their studies. At the Clearwater Church, the UUA and Levland Abbey Janamanchi have graciously agreed to let Mr. Nick Ozuna study the theory and administration of dissemination. This support is yet another practical benefit of the legacy of founder Nivano and Dr. Greeley's friendship. And I would again like to say thank you for this and the many other instances of the UUA's generosity and cooperation. Finally, I would like to conclude by stating my firm belief that the strong bond between the UUA and myself will become a beacon shining light on humans' great desire for the further development of interreligious cooperation in international society and peace in the world. And by once again expressing my gratitude for the honor of being given this opportunity to spend this time together with you. The miracle of today, these shared moments in our lives. Thank you very much. <laughs>